This week, we saw NT Sync make its way to Wine, but what will it mean for us Linux gamers? Plus, this guy turned his Steam Deck into a Steam Brick. We'll talk about it. And what's new with the Nexus Mods app? All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux Gaming News time. So this week, we saw Wine developers start the process of enabling NT Sync, or Ent Sync, as I'm gonna call it. Uh, they're going to add it to uh, their compatibility layer. Now, this is huge. This is going to be game changing for us Linux gamers. But the question is, what is NT Sync and how will it help us? Well, this is actually really interesting. Uh, if you've ever like dual booted Windows and Linux and switch between them rather frequently, you'll know that they are very different. One of them is slow. The other is sleek. One of them is complete bloat and the other is very lean. But even down to the core of the operating system, the environment that your applications run in, things are very different. Now, both Windows and Linux offer multi-threaded synchronization options for applications running on each operating system, but it should come as no surprise that the way these are implemented between the two systems is extremely different. Wine, and by extension, Proton, have had their own way of handling these differences. But the problem is they are so different that Wine has to handle things in user space. What this means is that when you're handling multi-threaded applications in Wine, uh, they're running as unprivileged tasks and they don't have the same level of insight between uh, applications or threads that a driver level implementation would have. And this also means that this Wine implementation here is one of the very few ways that Wine is actually significantly slower than Windows. Now you might've heard of eSync and F-Sync. These are kind of hacky ways of delivering a similar experience to uh, a Windows environment when it comes to kernel or system level uh, synchronization calls. The problem is the way they're implemented precludes them from being included in the Linux kernel. But NT-Sync, now that's where things get interesting because NT-Sync is a Linux kernel driver that was accepted and will be rolling out in the next uh, stable version of the Linux kernel. And NT-Sync, just like eSync and F-Sync, provide the same Windows style synchronization primitives. The important thing here is that it's included in the kernel where eSync and F-Sync weren't. And what's really impressive here is that we're seeing huge increases in performance for multi-threaded workloads. Now, some games have even seen over 600% increases in performance. I say some games, it's one game, but whatever. According to one of the Wine developers, NT Sync, quote, introduces a faster implementation of signal and weight operations on NT events, semaphores, and mutexes, which improves performance to native levels for a wide variety of games and other applications. The goal here is similar to the long-standing out-of-tree eSync and F-Sync patch sets, but without the flaws that make these patch sets not upstreamable. The Linux NT-Sync driver is not currently released. It has been accepted into the trunk Linux tree for 16.4. So barring any extraordinary circumstances, the API is frozen and it will be released in its current form in about two months. Since it has passed all relevant reviewers on the kernel side and the API is all but released, it seems there's no reason anymore to not submit the wine side to match. Now, this is very exciting stuff because come March or April, we're going to start seeing uh, Linux distros, including the latest Linux kernel, which will have NT Sync and Wine and thereby Proton should have support as well. And we'll be able to see how big of an improvement this is going to make for uh, us Linux gamers. And if it's any indication, I watched Brody Robertson's video about this the other day, and I recommend it to you if you want deeper technical details, but it's really exciting stuff. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts about any of this, but before you go down in the comments and start complaining about how this is bloat uh, in the in the Linux kernel from Windows that we don't want, this is all open source stuff. This isn't uh, this isn't Microsoft adding this kind of stuff. This is the community providing support and you don't have to have the driver installed if you don't want it. You can remove it. You can roll your own kernel if, if it bothers you that much. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below about this. Uh, and while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. All right, now it's time for deals of the week. And this week, there's a bundle of software 
over on Humble that I'm gonna recommend to you. It's called the Complete Learn to Code 2025 Bundle. And for 25 bucks, it has 55 titles. It'll help you learn Python, deep learning algorithms, as well as Godot Engine, Unreal, and even Unity development, and a bunch more. This is super cool, and there's also a bunch of um, Godot tutorials as well that you can get as a separate bundle. Both of those will be linked in the description and the pinned comment. As always, uh, using my links helps support this show uh, at no additional cost to you. So if you use my links, thanks. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, so have you guys seen this? This is, this is the Steam Brick. Uh, one of those terrible ideas that I'm so glad someone tried. Now this is super cool because this is some guy just taking a Steam Deck apart and turning it into a console. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I feel you, I feel you, buddy. Now here you can see that uh, this is basically just the uh, the main board and I think the battery and that's it for the Steam Deck. The rest of it uh, is splayed out in a tableau of technological destruction. <laughs> I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to like go on eBay and buy a um, like a Steam Deck with a damaged screen that still works and just do something like this and build a little console. The problem is all the TVs I have, except for this CRT are 4K and most of the games that I play, even though they're indie games, have a little bit of trouble at 4K. And I don't really like upscaling, so I don't know. It's, it's pretty neat though. It would be a fun project to do. Now the question is, why did this guy do this? And if you read uh, just a little bit, he says, I'm not a smart man, <laughs> which few people on the internet are. <laughs> Let's just say that. Essentially, it boils down to the fact that when he was playing the deck, he was either using his AR glasses, the uh, X-Real Air 2 Pro, or he was using it plugged into his TV. So he didn't have a lot of use for the built-in screen. And uh, got him thinking, could I make this smaller? Like really a lot lighter and smaller and you know, none of the other stuff. And so he did. Um, his first step was disassembling the uh, the whole device, took it apart, removed uh, as much as he could from the chassis. It looks like the internal metal chassis here has just been mutilated. <laughs> and he 3D he designed and 3D printed himself a new case, and it fits in a neat little package here that he can put in his backpack and take with him wherever he goes. Pretty neat. I mean, you know, I'd do this with a broken deck if I had one because uh, I think that would be really cool and it would be a nice way to upcycle a broken Steam Deck but I don't think I would do it unless I had a broken Steam Deck. The other thing is like you know these exist and this wasn't that expensive this was like five or six hundred dollars I think maybe, maybe maybe it was more but this is the uh, the EM 780 from Minis Forum and like this has more power than the Steam Deck does, and it's a tinier form factor than that. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's cool. And I want to see more stuff like this because I love community mods like this. And if you want to get his uh, case, you can actually head over to his website and pick the up, uh, pick up the STL file that he made uh, and you can 3D print yourself a Steam Brick. <laughs> Neat. All right. Finally, I want to talk about the new Nexus Mod app. I've been pretty bullish about uh, Nexus Mod's new app. Uh, it's cross-platform and it's supporting the Steam Deck out of the box. Uh, it's still fairly limited in terms of its capabilities, but there's new features every month. Uh, and uh, there needs to be a simple way of mo managing mods on the Steam Deck. And that's why I like this project as much as I do. Uh, I know every time I talk about it, people in the comments go off and are like, oh, Nexus Mods. I don't care. <laughs> you know why I don't care? Because this is free software, guys. This is free software, and what they're doing here is cool. So, not worried about whatever. I don't. I literally could not be paid to care money about that. Uh, but I do want to uh, mention some of the new updates here. Uh, they've improved the UI, which is very exciting uh, because the UI. It's grown and it's had its growing pains. They've added uh, file conflict resolution, uh, which <laughs> the way it was working before, it would literally just pick a random 
uh, winner for the file conflict, which is not really the most intuitive way to handle that. Uh, so what they're doing now is the most recently added mod with a file conflict is going to be the one that wins. So at the moment, if you have like a more important mod than uh, the one you're adding, uh, if they provide the same file, then the new one you're adding is going to uh, overwrite the old one. So what you do is you uninstall the important mod and then reinstall it. And that way it will win the conflict. This is, according to them, this is temporary. They've added support for Bannerlord software extender. Uh, and they've added a, a bunch of stuff to the logs to make troubleshooting easier. So yeah, this is really cool. I don't know if it's ready for production quite yet, uh, but it and it only supports a handful of games, including Cyberpunk, uh, including Cyberpunk 2077, Stardew Valley. I'm trying to think. Baldur's Gate 3, Mountain Blade. Yeah. So they they've they've got a bunch of games in here. Um, so they're 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 slowly adding support for games. Um, but yeah, I like this. I think this is pretty neat. Let me know your thoughts about any of the stuff that we talked about in today's video, because I think that's going to do it. It's been kind of a slow week. I've been like monitoring the subreddits and the, the news sites, and there hasn't been a whole lot going on. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't know, I post new videos every Monday and Friday, so you can get subscribed to check those out. Uh, if you believe in the work that I'm doing, if you enjoy this kind of content, where I talk about the news, or if you enjoy my Monday videos where it's more like tutorial style stuff, uh, you can help this show grow by using uh, the links below to Patreon or to become a YouTube member. Uh, it's all extremely uh, appreciated, especially right now. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it. I'll see you guys in the next one.